know real when you get it. It'll say eBay Authenticity Guarantee, and you'll feel it. Maybe it's a head-turning handbag, a watch that says it all, jewelry that makes you look like a gem, sneakers and streetwear so fresh, every step feels fly. eBay gets it, so look for the blue check mark next to that thing you love, and be confident that every inch, stitch, sole, and logo is checked by experts. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that feeling of real is always in reach. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome back to Podcast Royal. Rachel, it's the first day of Royal Ascot. Yes, it is. I was on Instagram earlier and I saw some pictures of Princess Eugenie. I saw Princess Anne and Zara and I saw Lady Gabriella Windsor. Mm. I think I might have read Peter Phillips is in attendance also today. I don't know. Did you see any of those photos? I have seen Zara, Gabriella, and Eugenie, and I have unfortunately not seen Peter or Anne, but I also haven't done like a full deep dive on Ask It yet, because we're going to, we'll talk about this later, but we'll do the full deep dive on on that next week after it's over, but I loved Eugenie's look and I loved Zara's look and I and Gabriella as well I just they, I'm sure you saw the hug moment between Gabriella and Zara that touched my heart so much so yes um, again we'll talk about this later but we'll talk more about ask it after it's done next week but what stood out to you did you like I love the pastels I guess with Zara and Eugenie I, I really liked those two looks I did. Yeah. I actually really liked Lady Gabriella's dress. I haven't um, really looked at her dress. I just saw the hug picture. You know, it was like a pink floral. I think there may have been some bows or ties around the arm, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was pretty. And yeah, it fit in with the the pastel kind of theme that we were seeing. I thought Princess Eugenie's dress was very pretty. I liked that kind of mint sort of color. I love that. Oh, and Queen Camilla was wearing a really beautiful blue color today that I like. Oh yeah. I saw that as well. Very oh, bold so royal blue. Yeah. I can't wait to see what we've got the rest of the week. Yes. I ask it for fashion alone is so much fun. Well, let's go ahead and get into the Royal rundown. I know we've got some big things to talk about this week. Huge so things to talk ready? about. My goodness. All of our dreams came true. It did. Okay. So we'll start out with the big surprise Instagram post that we got from the Princess of Wales. And this was quite the unexpected update. It was really in the form of another sincere, heartfelt message from her. Um, I know we both saw the post, Rachel, right around the same time. And I think both of us were feeling really emotional. And of course, we got that kind of burst of excitement for Trooping the Color when that came out. And, you know, we had commented last week about not having any expectations that we would see Catherine on the balcony. Um, I, you know, had quietly kind of noticed, and I think everyone else had, that the potential of her being there hadn't been fully shut down by the palace. You know, we had been told right. she would be at there at the colonel's review, but nobody had actually come out and confirmed she wouldn't be at Trooping the Colors. So there was a little bit of speculation there. And now we know why. You know, the Instagram post confirmed her plans to attend. It gave the public some reassurance that she's doing okay. And I know you and I both really loved that photo. So I want to talk oh about Oh my that. God, the photo. Yeah, it was, I mean, take it took my breath away. The whole, the whole, everything took my breath away. Yeah, so she is standing in this wooded, shaded area. She's under an ivy-covered tree. It looks to be a weeping willow, from what I could tell. And she's wearing a white shirt with this khaki blazer. She's got on jeans and tennis shoes. And her long hair, is it's like tucked behind one ear, and then it's part of it's pulled over her other shoulder. And in the picture, she's looking up at the sky with her arms crossed over her chest. And it was just, I mean, it told a whole story in, in that one photo. But the picture was taken by royal photographer Matt Porteous. I personally thought the lighting in this photo was impeccable mm-hmm. and the background to me just looked like a storybook English forest, didn't it? I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. Matt Porteous is a longtime royal favorite and that was taken on the Windsor estate, which is where Adelaide Cottage, Cottage is and it was taken earlier in the week. So it wasn't a, an old photo. It's it's was taken last week. So um, it's just, I mean, again, it, it, the I don't know what's more powerful, actually, the photo or the words, probably the words, but barely. Yeah. The photo yeah. is 
incredibly powerful too. Well, I'm going to share the words for our listeners who I'm pretty sure have probably all read and I'm them. I'm glad now. you're going to read this in full because this is so powerful and I just, it's applicable to every life, some of the lines. So I'm glad you're going to read it in full. Yes. Yes. I did want to do that. I did not want to pick apart this one. So, all right. She says, I have been blown away by all the kind messages of support and encouragement over the last couple of months. It really has made the world of difference to William and me and has helped us both through some of the harder times. I am making good progress, but as anyone going through chemotherapy will know, there are good days and bad days. On those bad days, you feel weak, tired, and you have to give in to your body resting. But on the good days, when you feel stronger, you want to make the most of feeling well. My treatment is ongoing and will be for a few more months. On the days I feel well enough, it is a joy to engage with school life, spend personal time on the things that give me energy and positivity, as well as starting to do a little work from home. I'm looking forward to attending the King's birthday parade this weekend with my family and hope to join a few public engagements over the summer, but equally knowing I am not out of the woods yet. I am learning how to be patient, especially with uncertainty, taking each day as it comes, listening to my body and allowing myself to take this much needed time to heal. Thank you so much for your continued understanding and to all of you who have so bravely shared your stories with me. See. I mean, that's, that's unprecedented level of candor and vulnerability. And it just really shows that this is the new way forward. And my, the, the line that struck, I mean, there's a so much powerful language in that, but the line I'm learning how to be patient, especially with uncertainty. I mean, Mm -hmm. is there a human being that can't relate to that line? And I mean, it's just, and she wrote that herself, by the way, I, I don't know if she got guidance, but those are her words and from the heart and just all I have to say, I know I'm not British, but that's my queen. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. a, that's queen behavior right there. It's, it's yeah. just, it, I'm rendered speechless. It's wonderful. Well, we talk a lot about the thoughtfulness behind Royal messages and the imagery and the words that they use or the clothes that they wear, you know, all these little details. And something that really stuck out to me was her comment that she's not out of the woods yet, because in the photo, she is quite literally standing in the woods and she's Mm -hmm. looking up at the light, which I think could mean so many things, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. It could be for the future. Um, Most importantly, it could be looking to God to guide her through life's ups and downs. And so I felt like the way that she tied those words in to, you know, not being out of the woods and having that in with her picture was really, really thoughtful in her messaging. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's ever been. uh, This is one of the most powerful royal photos of all time. It will go down that way. I do believe that. Well, I do think, you know, this update from her was absolutely the right move at the right time. She has been really thoughtful of the public and how she's approached the communication of her health and her healing journey. Because if we look back, and I've said this before on the podcast, but she's actually been very consistent. You know, I think a lot of the confusion that went on a few months ago around around her whereabouts was really coming heavily from internet trolls and a lot of the conspiracy theories. It, it wasn't coming from the royal family because in January, she told us she was having surgery and she would be away from engagements until at least after Easter. And then she stepped in in March and she told the world that she had cancer and would continue to be away for a while during her treatments. Now she's told us in June that she'll continue to undergo treatment for a few more months, but she's introducing light work at home and she's going to attend some engagements in the coming weeks and months. So, I mean, I think she's handled this very beautifully. I think she's had so much poise through all of this. And Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I just, I don't know. I thought it was a really, really incredible message. I was, you know, obviously we've even talked on the show about the possibility being there, but I had started to believe that that was not going to happen. Just, uh, you know, I just had, I didn't want to get my hopes up to have them, them dashed. And when I got this news that, um, I think all I texted was you, you was like exclamation points because it was just so just this weekend really just brought so much hope back. I mean, we'll talk about trooping the collar in a second, but 
it was rainy. It was disgusting weather all like for most of the carriage procession. And a lot of, I, they wondered if the fly pass would even happen. And then the sun comes out. And I think that that's kind of symbolic of what's going on in the Royal family. There's so much dark, ominous, ominous year really. And, but this weekend the sun came out and, and it was, yes. it was great. And in that photo, the Matt Porteous photo is beautiful. It's so moving. I just, again, continue to be blown away by the newfound candor and openness of the Royal family. It's unprecedented, but yet it's so welcome. And you're right. Kate has never been to, I, I mean, I, other, other than the photo thing, which we will not get into because that's in the past, she's is consistent. She does what she says she's going to do in Kensington palace is, you know, they've, they, they've, they're coming back in my good graces and the way that they're handling things now, I think they're learning from their mistakes. I mean, who among us mm-hmm. hasn't made mistakes? I know I have, and, but they're learning from them. And I'm so excited about the prospect of possibly seeing Kate a little bit this summer. I, I, I again, I don't think we should get overly excited to see her with regularity for some time. And of course that her treatment should continue to be the priority. But I think that knowing that for Trooping the Collar, knowing that William would be on horseback, Kate didn't want anyone else but her to be with George, Charlotte, and Louis in the, in the carriage procession, nor did she want them to be alone. And the kids love trooping the collar they love the fly pass they they love they love all of the pomp and ceremony and and i know that she didn't want them to miss it so she was there and and of course for the king too she she and the king have never been closer as they both battle cancer and it meant everything to the public yes but also to the kids and to william and to the king and and that's you know kate is someone who is very very duty oriented but also very family oriented we have mm-hmm. a lot we can learn from her and she wanted to be there for her family, simply put. And I, uh, by the way, before we get into Trooping the Color, which we're about to, I love how Trooping the Color is the King's birthday parade, but I promise you listeners, that I think, I don't think we're going to really talk <laughs> about him at all. Like, I don't think we're going to mention the King and Queen uh, a whole lot. So um, happy, happy yeah. celebrated birthday, King Charles. We're not going to talk about you um, at all. Ha- happy official birthday. No, yeah. I'm, I'm to the sword. <laughs> Um, but you know, let's, let's move into Saturday now. So, I mean, there's, this is the news of the week. I don't think there's anywhere else to, to start other than that message from Kate and trooping the color. So just right off the top, I want to know some of your, your thoughts, your observations, your takeaways. And then, um, of course we'll eventually talk fashion. Yeah, I know we'll get into all of it, but off the top, I loved the video footage of the day that came Mm -hmm. out. I really love the Princess of Wales dress and how it coordinated so well with the children's outfits. I I thought seeing the balcony was another standout moment for me. And, you know, I have to say, even though it wasn't a full balcony in the sense that the extended family wasn't out there, it, you know, it didn't feel like it was lacking to me at all. Mm -hmm. Um, It felt full and I think it was the right move ultimately. And I will say, I know we're not going to talk much about King Charles, but um, I did think on Saturday, it says a lot about him that he, he knew, he knew his birthday would be overshadowed and he still welcomed the princess of Wales um, there and, and wanted to have her there. And so, you know, I thought that was really sweet of him. Well, he, he, yes, I agree. But also, so that Jenny Packham dress there, and we'll talk more about this in a little bit, but uh, first of all, that was a rewear. So do you remember, I remember that dress. I loved that dress. Um, It's been, it's had some embellishments added to it. So it's not the exact same dress. It is the same dress, but it's had some embellishments added to it. She wore that the night before or the day before King Charles's coronation on May 5th. And she, so she wore that on coronation Eve. So just a few things about the dress. I've read that she wore that dress, which was a rewear. So as not, so as not to overshadow the King. So as, so, you know, cause everybody wants to talk about her fashion, us included. And so that she, and, and it was a color that was beautiful, but you know, not a bold color per se. Also she, um, one of the, so this has been the planning of this has been kept a secret 
her, her I mean it's kind of been rumbled but the actual planning of it has has really been kept top secret and so she didn't want to commission a new dress for this so she had a dress that she already had repurposed for this event and that was kind of part of the strategy so that it wouldn't get out that she was going to possibly be mm-hmm. a trooping the color and not only that but it has a tie to King Charles, right? Because this, uh, lest, lest we forget, Trooping the Color is about King Charles. That right. dress was worn for King Charles for his coronation. So it kind of ties it all up with with a bow. But yeah. just, they're so it's so sweet, their their relationship. And if you if you think about it, if she knows people are gonna be talking about what she wore then that conversation will lead people right back to the king, the, king. the coronation. Exactly. So exactly. Exactly. So she's very smart. She's very smart. So, um, I, so here are a couple of my thoughts about trooping the color. So I did obviously hate that the weather was so nasty, especially since of course, June was chosen specifically for trooping the color, because in theory, the weather is good during that time in London. But, um, I'm, I, again, as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm probably reading too much into this, but I, I really was moved by how dark and rainy it was but by the end of the event the sun had come out and and again I wondered if that wasn't a metaphor for the royal family and for different seasons of life in general you know even through our darkest and toughest moments the sun will shine again right Mm -hmm. and so I actually worked trooping the color so that was complete with a 4 45 a.m call time which I we haven't had one I mean other than trooping the color last year we haven't had a lot of events we were having them all the time for a while between you know, the platinum Jubilee and the funeral and all of this, but, um, that's, it's early, but I, am, let me tell you, getting up at 4 45 AM was made a lot easier from the announcement the day before from Kate that she was going to be there. <laughs> and so my editor actually pointed this out. The band played somewhere over the rainbow. Did you catch that? Cause I actually didn't catch it until my editor was like, they're playing somewhere over the rainbow, which I'm from Kansas. So that's kind of like, like, in our unofficial state song, yeah. um, which, which she, my editor couldn't, and I can't remember them ever doing. And it made me think in this, like, I don't want to start crying. It made me think of after queen Elizabeth died back in September, 2022, remember that rainbow mm-hmm. that appeared over Buckingham palace and how powerful mm-hmm. that was and how powerful Kate being there on Saturday was she, I thought she looked healthy and well and beautiful. I might add, if you did not know that she was receiving treatment for cancer, you might not know. And, um, there was a moment at the very end that I caught. And if you didn't hang out until the, like the very bitter end of the balcony appearance, the doors to Buckingham palace were closing as the Royal family walked back in after the fly pass and Sophie, God love Sophie, everyone, you all know that Jessica and I both love Sophie. She put a supportive hand on William's back and she didn't obviously didn't say anything or if she did, we didn't hear it, but that nonverbal gesture said everything. It was just kind of like a, you did it. And it just such a message of reassurance and, and almost also a message of, are you okay? Like, are you, are you all right? And it just reminded me again, to humanize the whole situation and reminded me that this is a family and that these are real people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree. And Rachel, we have come to that point in the podcast where if we're <laughs> going to talk about the family and we're going to talk about relatable moments can we talk about Prince Louis for a second? Every day of my life, I want to talk about Prince Louis because Prince Louis is 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 the bright spot in a lot of dark days. Yes, we can talk about Prince Louis. Um, yeah, I mean, he was star of the show again. You know, especially with with the laughs and and bringing that lighthearted kind of yes of the day. yes <laughs> well he I I love Louis being Louis he's always gonna Louis right he was dancing he was yawning he was playing with the curtains Charlotte was keeping him in line but he said no I mean according to these <laughs> lip readers which like who knows if there's any validity there but um I think I think at one point Charlotte told him to stop dancing which is amazing and <laughs> and told him how to hold his arms as the national anthem played and like he, apparently he told her no and so uh, he just I love this child 
He seems like such a happy child to me. He's got this sweet, playful nature. And I'm sure you saw this too. At one point, he was pulling on the curtain string inside the <laughs> palace. And he was kind of playing at the window, like putting his hands around the, the windowsill. And <laughs> it's like, thank you for someone capturing this photo. <laughs> I know. I mean, just like, uh, he's just, uh, you know, Louis being Louis says, I think, more than we realize. Because... If things weren't okay, then I don't think he would still be that way. You know, I think him being his playful self is actually such a great sign. And I thought the three kids all um, really looked protective over their mom, but perhaps none more so than Charlotte. There's this photo that I saw and um, it, I think Kate is exiting the carriage and Charlotte just looks back at her like just to make sure she's okay. Like, and that make that doesn't make me want to cry because Charlotte's, they're all so young. Right. And like, we don't know what they've been through. Obviously they know, like at least to an extent what's going on, but like, that's her mom, you know? Yeah. And yeah. um, sorry, like, just like she looked, she looked back at her and it was just, it was caught in this photo and she's making sure her mom's getting out of the carriage. Okay. And it just, it was just a photo. Like there were a lot of photos. We're going to talk about the William and Kate loved up photo in a second, but there were just a lot of photos that spoke so much, so much volume. And like all, all of them were looking out for their mom and it just shows how much they love their mom. Yeah. I think as they get older, we can kind of see all their different little personalities coming out at events like this. And Charlotte is, you know, she's like, She's definitely being a little mommy. I think she is a caretaker. She seems like she takes her role very seriously. And I think she understands the importance of behaving well and that all eyes are on them. And I think she, you know, is a little bit of a, a rule follower in that regard. Um, and then I kind of felt like, you know, as we watch George more, I think you can really see that he also has this awareness of his role in the monarchy, mm -hmm. I feel like. And, you know, at these events, to me, he just looks like he's, you know, just soaking in the views and the moments. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's so fun to see their little personalities. I know, I know. And I also noticed, of course, I mean, nobody missed this, that the King and the Princess of Wales stood next to one another on the balcony. Again, I don't think that that was an accident or a coincidence. I find that indicative of their newfound closest. I don't ever remember them. I mean, I know William was next to him last year, um, but I don't, really in the past remember seeing them standing next to one another like that uh, especially when the, when Charles became king maybe I'm mistaken again I know that it was William who was next to him last year also as you said earlier I loved the prince and princess of Wales's behind the scenes footage from the day and then there's this photo of William and Kate which I dropped in the Google Doc and listeners I'm sure you've seen this photo these past few days. I think this photo is again one of those photos like there are so many photos this weekend and then we have another one to talk about with Father's Day. So many photos this weekend that say so much without technically saying a word. So if this is a photo of William and Kate they're on the Buckingham Palace balcony they're looking at one another. Kate's smile is radiant at her husband and after the day wrapped William and Kate wrote that it was such a special day and you know what it, it really really was having the princess of Wales I knew that we would whenever the time came that she came back I knew that we would appreciate it I didn't know how much I mean I don't know if you got emotional but I certainly did the first time I saw her um, getting into the carriage and so having her back even in a limited capacity means everything everything. I am looking at this picture of the two of them that you put in our notes. And this might be one of the most romantic mm -hmm. royal photos that we've gotten. And it, it was so um, just like a candid moment, you know, they're not, they're not thinking about the cameras, but their love to me in this photo is so abundantly clear. It just, I mean, the way she's looking at him cannot be fake. Like that is no. a genuine, I'm in love with you smile. And, you know, we've, we've mentioned this on here before, but just the way that they look at each other, you know, in general, when they're interacting with each other. And I don't know, I, it, in this photo in particular, I can tell that she is truly happy to be standing there next to him with their family. And I feel like this year, probably more than ever, mm -hmm. her gratitude for that moment has got to be just so deep. 
100%. I mean, this photo to me says we made it, you know, mm -hmm. like we mm -hmm. made it here. Like, yeah. I get it. God, I am such a freaking mess. That makes it's just so emotional. Like these, like, <laughs> like when you, when there, it's just been such a tough year in this family. And, um, this photo is beautiful. And again, it's not a posed photo that, I mean, the camera's, you know, a bajillion yards away. They don't know. It's just mm -hmm. such a genuine moment of true love honestly and like when you I just think about it sometimes these two have been together the, William will be 42 this week they've been together for over half of their lives at this mm -hmm. point and just how important they are to each other and never maybe more so than now so absolutely yeah. beautiful well I want to go back to her Jenny Packham dress for mm -hmm. just a second um I I do remember this from the coronation last year and I know in that version we saw they were one of the photos that I really stuck out to me from the coronation it was one of the looks that she had that I really really liked from that week but they were out greeting the public and mm -hmm. she had the dress paired with those black I think it was aquazura bow pumps yep um and this time she had it paired with white pumps with yeah they no were the, her white Jimmy Choo's Yes, the the bow detail. And I know I did see there was like at least at first some disagreement online over whether or not it was a rewear. But to me, it is I looked at the picture very closely and it is a way too similar to last year's dress to not be a rewear. I mean, this yeah, is it's a definitely rewear. the same dress. Yeah, it's been it's been jazzed up a little bit. Um, and, you know, I, I think originally we thought it was because of the sustainable fashion efforts, which it probably is in part. But the, the look in case there's like the one percent chance listeners that you missed it, it's a white dress with black trim. Now there is a ribbed embellishment on the neckline. And again, yeah, we, she wore it back in May 2023. So um, and, um, you know, coordinated with with Charlotte as well, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um I'm trying to make sure that we hit all of the high points. So again, I loved last year's version of it. I'm looking like I'm looking at a photo of it on my phone right now. I love this version of it. She wore a hat from Philip Tracy. She wore the pearl earrings that she does quite often. The ones from Louis christening back in 2018. I think she wore them again to Wimbledon last summer. She also wore the um, Irish guards regimental brooch and yeah, um, just, I, I, I loved this dress in 2023. I love it now. Charlotte's dress I know you mentioned it was this nautical inspired dress and it was like a deep navy color it had mm -hmm. white trim on this kind of like a large square collar and she had a white bow on the front and I don't know if you went back and did this Rachel but I looked at last year's photos and it was very reminiscent of yes, the it was. Dress from 2023 so last year's dress was similar style but it was white with red trim the collar was a little bit different but they were they were pretty similar yeah, very, both very nautical inspired. Mm -hmm. And, um, and again, I love it. Like, I love how Kate and Charlotte do mother daughter dressing. Cause they're not like copy and paste of each other. Like right. they're not identical, which would be kind of creepy almost, but, <laughs> but they, but they, they mirror each other. Like they complement each other really well. Like their color scheme was the inverse of the other. And it's just really well, really well coordinated. I also loved um, Sophie's sunshine yellow dress from Beulah London that seems to be a favorite of Sophie's and there was an article I saw in the Daily Mail it's a favorite of a lot of royals too yeah every time I hear Beulah London I think of Sophie now for some reason um, and then every time I see Lady Louise um, when she's got the white and blue Irish dress that she mm -hmm. had on at the event I always think of you because I think of how much you love that dress I love that dress. And so um, her, yeah, that was a dress. That was a rewear of the Susanna London look, big, like you just said that I loved from the coronation. So, and Gabriella Kingston, so you brought this up forever ago, rumors, rumblings that Gabriella Kingston, who's also had a rough year of her own this year, she, uh, you brought up that she was going to be there and she was, so she was actually there. She was kind of in a blink and you'll miss it moment. She was actually if you look, if, I mean, if you've all taped this for whatever reason, or if you want to roll the tape back, she was behind the Duke of Kent and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, who of course is Princess Anne's husband. So I was so happy that she was included. Of course, um, we kind of teed this up at the top of the episode. We'll talk about this next week, but Gabriella was also at Royal Ascot today, that hug moment, this beautiful hug. Mm -hmm. So glad she's being included in Royal occasions, but not everyone was there. So Louise was there with her parents, Edward and Sophie. 
but James, her younger brother, was not there. The reason, the best reason I could find is that he is away in Surrey at school and he's likely in exams right now, according to Hello. So, so that's why James was not there. But okay. there were some other people that weren't there as well. So Beatrice wasn't there. Eugenie wasn't there. Zara wasn't there. Were you disappointed to not see in Mike Tindall, those the, those that were at the garden party, we'll just say, not there with the rest of the family at the on the balcony on the balcony on Saturday? And I'm wondering what you did think about who was there and who wasn't. What are your, what are your thoughts yeah. on the lineup? Well, I know I kind of mentioned this at the top of the episode, but I actually was not disappointed. I know we were really hopeful for a full balcony. Um, and I do think that part of our hope there was from us believing partially that, you know, she, Catherine wouldn't be there. Um, but the balcony was consistent with last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, again, there was so much joy that day seeing the King and the princess of Wales in attendance and the Wales children that we were hoping to see that it really, you know, having a slim down balcony, it didn't feel awkward up there. It didn't feel like bare or lacking, like I said. Um, and I didn't feel like it was scarce. And, and I, you know, I think I, I said earlier, I think it was the right move. Um, and part of that is because, well, I mean, you know, one, the people that we were really hoping to see showed up um, <laughs> and they kept it consistent with with last year. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? Um, I, yeah, I, to be honest with you, had Kate not been there, I might've noticed their absence, yes. but we had more than we could ask for. I think, I think we had, um, just seeing Kate and the King was more than I could have ever hoped for, honestly. So I was, I was not disappointed. Yeah. And one more thing I'll say about the day, you know, Rachel, I know you just, uh, got emotional a few minutes ago, but as I do on this podcast, for whatever reason, I don't cry all the time, but only on podcast Royal. <laughs> Our listeners probably can tell just from listening to the podcast that I don't, I don't. You're much more stoic than I am. <laughs> and I, maybe that's my stiff, what is it? This Your upper, British upper, upper lip. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, Jessica's mom is British uh, listeners in case you didn't know that from our 145 <laughs> episodes, but um, she's a true, she's a born from a British woman. So she, you really do have that honest British stiff upper lip. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know if that's what it is, but I don't, I normally don't really get overly emotional when we talk about things related to the Royal family. And like I said, I know Rachel, you get, I do. <laughs> I and am not, me, I am not British. So I have no me, British parents. I think that I, I, when I say this, I'm probably speaking for, uh, you know, other British people who are blamed to have a stiff upper lip, but you, you feel all the feels, you know, you have emotions, but sure, even when course. you're feeling the feels, you know, I'm just generally able to hold it together pretty well, but I have to admit something. So on Saturday, when I was watching the footage from this event and I saw the video of the princess of Wales, I, I got emotional and I teared mm -hmm. up just thinking about the journey that she's been on and the strength that it must've taken for her to even just show up to this event, you know, mm -hmm. both physically and emotionally. We see her there as the public and we get really happy and excited and don't think about what goes on behind the scenes. But as a wife and a mother, you know, of young children, she's constantly in the spotlight. She's battling this, you know, severe illness and going through treatment. And amidst all of that, she chose to be there on Saturday morning for the public. Mm -hmm. And I feel so much for her. My heart goes out to her. You know, it, it's not like she woke up on Saturday and just rode over to the palace. I am sure there was a very early wake up call. There was hair and makeup appointments. There was dressy clothing, tall heels, mm -hmm. making sure children were taken care of, being on camera with all eyes on you from around the world all day. And I, I just really admire her for her strength. Um, I think, I, I, you know, I, I know she's done. It, it took a lot to do that. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I found myself getting emotional over that on Saturday. So yeah, I mean, same. I mean, you, uh, you know, I cried and, um, you know, there were contingency plans in place if she couldn't do it. And uh, they, this was her decision. Nobody pressured her to do this. This is her decision. She wanted to be there for her father-in-law. And I mean, this is, 
this is a really good person. I really do believe that in my heart, that this is a good person with a good soul. And, Mm -hmm. you know, all I have to say is welcome back, your majesty. We really missed you and we can't wait to see you again, but your treatment comes first. So what, what a weekend, right? I mean, what a day. And and that's not even all. So, so we've got Friday, we've got Saturday, then Sunday. So the next day, Sunday was father's day in the UK and the U S so the U S the UK have different mother's day celebrations. The UK does it in March. U S does it in May, but sync up for whatever reason for father's day in June, the Royal family always does such a good job of marking father's day on social media. Of course, we have to talk about the George, Charlotte, and Louis message their dad alongside mm-hmm. a photo taken. Um, I think I read that it was taken last, like while they were on that half term break um, mm-hmm. at, at Amber Hall um, up in Norfolk. So um, it, the photo was taken by Kate and the message from the three kids, which by the way, was their first ever social media statement. Um, and I have read that we shouldn't get used to that. That's not going to become a normal thing, but um, it was it was cool to see because they, it, well, I'll read it. It said simply but beautifully, we love you, Papa. Uh, happy Father's Day. And um, all four of you've seen the photo listeners, I'm sure, but they have their backs to the camera. They're all looking out at what appears to be a beach. And I mean, we've come a long way, haven't we, from the Mo- Mother's Day photo scandal. And for that, I am grateful. Yeah. One thing that really kind of stood out for me about this is, um, you know, you see if you see photos of, of, Prince William and and videos of him with his children. And, you know, even in this photo, you can just really tell that they've got a genuinely close relationship. Mm -hmm. I think he is so great with his kids. Um, It's just so apparent to me that he's not just popping in to see them for a few minutes a day or scheduling an appointment in with them. I feel like when he wraps up his work day, he goes home, he has dinner around the table with his family. He reads mm-hmm. bedtime stories. You know, that that's, that's what I imagine based on, um, you know, how his relationship with his children appear from, from what I can see. It just feels like he and Catherine are really intentionally choosing a life right now in this season that is honestly pretty similar to a non-royal commoner. You know, they've chosen to live in a a modest home and in royal world, at least with with no staff. They do school runs. They take family vacations. They take their own photos of their kids. And I think that that investment that they're making in their family is really working out well for all of them because they are a joy to watch. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I know William has said that he's determined to not have his kids be raised the way that that he was and i mean you can juxtapose it so Will, william posted a happy father's day photo for his own father and you know i'm i know that william appreciates his father and the way he was raised but the you could like look at the differences right mm-hmm. i mean i think in that photo charles is in a suit you know and it's like and whereas the the wales family photo is very casual and so I, I'm calling it Royal Parenting 2.0, and it's just so great. <laughs> like, it's it's so different. It's so healthy. It's so, um, like, truly think that, I mean, you can't be Kate and be someone that advocates for early years work and not put that own work into practice with your own kids, right? And so yeah. I think that George, Charlotte, and Louis are truly getting the best shot at life, not just because they have castles that they can go to or palaces, but because they are being raised intention- like with really intentional parenting from both parents. And they're lucky kids. And it has nothing to do with titles or castles or money. It has everything to do with they really have a great family structure. And um, so happy Father's Day to the king, to William, to all all fathers, really. And and speaking of William, he turns 42 on Friday, June 21st. So happy early birthday. We know that the day prior to his birthday, he'll be in Europe watching football or soccer in the U.S. as England plays Denmark in Euro 2024. So I'm sure he will enjoy that as big of a football fan as he is. He's also, of course, the president of the FA. So he also, I, I don't really, I don't really have much context to this visit, but I do want to sneak this in here. He had a visit to the British Secret service mi6 this week um so no no further details were disclosed other than that the visit happened so there's that um also (laughs) too especially i have no context for that um 
I want to especially celebrate the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, Prince Edward and Sophie. So their landmark 25th wedding anniversary is June 19th, which is the day that this episode comes out. May I mention that of the Queen and Phil- Prince Philip's four children, there's just the only marriage that did not, first marriage anyway, that did not end in divorce. And not only did it not end in divorce, but 25 years and, wow. and counting and based off of that Sophie's comments about her husband at his birthday back in March. I know you remember that Jessica, um, th- their marriage seems stronger than ever. So happy anniversary and what a great model to, to look out. Yeah. For. It's just a, a beautiful marriage. And so the June calendar continues to be full. So we will talk about the Japan state visit, which is scheduled for June 25th. In our next episode, we will record it on June 25th. So we will, it will have just happened. And this week we've got some Royal calendar staples that we always have in June. We have, uh, we've talked about this a couple of times, Royal Ascot and the garter service. So we're going to do the Ascot roundup next week. Cause it's still happening. I think today was just day one. But we did have the garter service on Monday. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, we're just going to hit on this really quickly. So Monday was garter day, which means we had the order of the garter ceremony. We we talk about this every year when this happens. But if you are a new listener, the order of the garter is the UK's oldest and highest order of chivalry. And the ceremony has been a royal tradition since 1948. Um, so at this year's ceremony, we saw King Charles, we saw Queen Camilla, saw Prince William and Prince Edward. And I'm going to throw this in there too. So listeners probably remember not too long ago, we talked about the order of the elephant on a recent episode. So I just wanted to like tie that back in to connect mm-hmm. these two. So that's Denmark's oldest and highest order of chivalry. And then the order of the garter is the UK's. So there you go. Very interesting. Interesting fact. Yeah. Well, a news item that happened, I think it happened, I think it came out in the news maybe last week. I don't know. But I want to briefly mention that for, um, well, before we talk about Natasha Archer, briefly mention that for those who may be losing sleep over this, which is probably no one, but King Charles is very, very, very red portrait by Jonathan Yeo is fine. It was, van- I very briefly mentioned this last episode. It was vandalized by animal rights protesters. Um, I just wanted to close that loop. The, the painting is fine. So you <laughs> can, you. <laughs> you can sleep, you could sleep comfortably tonight. It's fine. So anyway, according to the daily mail, Kate, I know you've heard all of you. Well, maybe not all of you, but Jessica, I know you've heard of Natasha Archer. Um, yes. so that is Kate's longtime personal assistant. We love her or I I know that I speak for you. We've never expressly had a conversation about this, but I know you love her too. And she's actually married to Royal photographer, Chris Jackson, who has been a guest on our show twice. And we love him too. too. Natasha Archer was quietly promoted to senior private executive, apparently all the way back to August, 2022, according to Natasha's updated LinkedIn profile. So, and somebody just now noticed this. So I guess we're all asleep at the wheel, but Mm -hmm. Natasha has worked as a personal assistant to both Kate and William since August, 2010. So that's of course, even before Kate married into the family. Um, Of course they didn't get married until April of 2011. So the daily mail reports that Natasha's new appointment can be interpreted as Kate's way of thanking her for her loyalty. I think that my prediction, Jessica, is that Natasha will become to Kate what Angela Kelly was to Queen Elizabeth. That's my prediction. Yeah. So she, I mean, they've already been working together for f- nearly 14 years. So congratulations to Natasha Archer, who is just about as loyal as it comes. So congrats. congrats. And so a late ad here. So really quickly, I want to mention that I just found this out today that Beatrice is at the Can Lion festival in Cannes right now and that's that's less of a film festival and more of like a a leaders a leadership summit um example Beatrice spoke about yesterday on a panel about emotional intelligence in the AI age which I think is incredibly cool so I want to mention that and I love details like this Beatrice is a princess yes but she's also a very low maintenance travel traveler excuse me which I love so she not only carried her own bags but she flew to Cannes on the UK's popular low-cost airline EasyJet Mm -hmm. and she skipped the Windsor suite (laughs) at Heathrow which we've talked about multiple times on the show and she actually skipped Heathrow altogether. So she flew out of London's Luton Airport, which is smaller and much less flashy than Heathrow. Beatrice, you are so cool. 
We love you. She is um, giving Princess Anne vibes, right? Yes, exactly. That's exactly who I thought of because Princess Anne carries her own luggage too. So mad respect. So that is the end of the Royal Rundown. What a week, right? I mean, just so much happy. Like we've just had so much dark this year and it's so nice to have a weekend that was so uplifting like that. It definitely was. And we've got a pretty brief Royals around the world. Just a couple of things to mention for this week. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Have you ever wondered what it's like to bite into nerds gummy clusters? They're fruity. They're tangy. They're gummy. And they're crunchy. Nerds Gummy Clusters, a union of fruity sweet gummy and tangy crunchy nerds. Unleash your senses. Shop now at nerdscandy.com. With half price appetizers, late night at Applebee's is for the second shifters. Working hard ish and partying harder. The parents, who found a sitter they kind of trust a little and ran with it. And old friends sharing new stories over scrumptious shareables for half the price. Late Night at Applebee's is for every crew, squad, group of homies, or loose acquaintances who know that half-price appetizers are way more fun. But they won't last forever, so hurry in. Limited time, selection, price, and participation may vary by restaurant location. Valid for dining orders and online via Applebee's.com or the mobile app. First off, congratulations to Prince Bear Magnus of Norway. He graduated from high school this week. Oh, cool. Congrats. Yeah, big accomplishment. Um, Okay, so let's talk about Sweden. We've got a few updates here, one that I'm particularly excited to close the loop on. (laughs) Um, First, (laughs) though, we had um, an 80th birthday celebration to our dancing queen, Queen Sylvia. Happy birthday. Yeah, she turned 80 years old, and she celebrated with a private dinner with family and friends. But we did get a few pictures online, um, kind of from a distance of her and, and her family attending the event, including some royal friends. So we saw King Harold and Queen Sonia of Norway in attendance at her party. Um, I saw a lot of pretty dresses, Rachel, but I didn't see tiaras for this, I guess, because it was a private event. Well, happy birthday to happy graduation, happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy everything. Happy trooping the color. Everybody's happy this week. (laughs) And here's the big update we've all been waiting for. Finally. Princess Madeline has officially moved back to Sweden. So last episode, we were just talking about this because they had her birthday post and they said she has decided she's coming back now. And, you know, they didn't give us any date. So we were speculating if she would actually move back before for the end of summer and how that would time that timeline would line up with school with her kids um so right after that episode actually we saw photos of her and her family arriving in sweden solidifying their move they were getting off the airplane um just getting there uh so as a reminder they've been in Ma- the miami area i think since 2018 so about mm-hmm. six years so um i guess they're excited to be home and i can't wait to see if we'll start seeing her at more royal events I, I, I will miss, I will you, miss here you here in here Florida, in Florida. <laughs> but, but welcome back to Sweden for sure. And that's it for this episode. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us for another episode of Podcast Royal. We love our weekly chats with our listeners and we really love it when you come hang out with us off the pod um, and chat with us about things that you like to see from the royal family or questions that you have for us Um, as a reminder you can follow us on instagram at podcast royal you can also send us a dm over there or if you want to reach out to us directly you can email us at hello podcast royal at gmail.com and please be sure to go out there and subscribe so you don't miss an episode we also would really love a five star rating and review that's always a fun surprise for us to be able to read and as always thank you for tuning in to episode 145 of podcast royal bye bye